And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at mages. Now I have to say, when I first heard about mages, I wasn't really that keen on the game, if only because the front of the box looks like some nerd forced this girl to get a picture taken at the prom of them dressed up in fantasy fight. The, the artwork was just kind of a little stil stilted and lifeless. But you never know. And, you know, again, the Mages theme is kind of a wearisome theme. Again, Mages fighting each other. This has been going on for a while. Although I do know it's an easy thing to base a game around. So let's take a look at this game that's for two to four players. At the beginning of the game, each player gets a player board. They have two life. There's three there because each player gets a special character. Like this guy here gets plus one in the skill of your choice. So maybe he takes plus one healing. But there's at least one person who gives you um, a life of three. So there's different characters that you can take here. Items only cost 200. Finn. Finn is money in this game. This guy gets plus one to the defense skill level. This guy starts the game with three life. He's the one I'm talking about. So you have four different abilities, attack, defense, healing, and dark magic. You start with a handful of cards, and then the game begins. On your turn, you have three actions that you can take, and they're up to you what you want to do. Many of your actions are going to be taking a card from the center row or from the top of the deck. There are orbs, there are jewels, and there's money, Finn, that comes in 200 or 400 Finn cards. And there's this Mizuko card, which is basically either a wild orb or a wild gem, your choice. When you take one of these cards, you just take it and you replace it, the only restriction is you only may take one Mizuko card per turn. So if I take this one, I can't take another one from the face up ones. I can draw and hope I get one. Uh, there's 200 Finn and uh, 200 more Finn. Now, you can spend 400 Finn to buy an item card as one of your actions. There's all different item cards. These cards can be played on someone else. Target player only gets one action on the next turn. Deflect a spell into another player of your choosing. Sometimes they happen immediately. Sometimes they go face up in front of someone and then they'll be used on the next turn. You can also spend orbs to upgrade your levels here. So I can spend two red orbs, two pyro orbs to upgrade my attack to level one. Then I can spend two more to upgrade it to level two. Then I spend three more to upgrade it to level three. You can also spend gems to buy spells. There are four different types of spells. The Wither, Heal, Fireball, and Counter Spell. And then for an action later on, I can use those spells against another player. When you use a spell against another player, when you attack another player, you're going to roll dice equal to your level. So if you're level 0, you roll four, a 4-sided four die. If you're level 1, 6-sided. Level 2, 8-sided. Level 3, 10-sided. When, when you attack someone with a Fireball, you both roll your die. They'll be rolling for their defense ability. You roll for the fireball spell. If you hit them, they will lose a life. If you attack someone with a wither spell, they will go down a level in something of your choice. So I might knock their healing down. If you successfully cast a heal spell, that you go up against an eight-sided die. If you're successful, you heal a wound back. And a counter spell will be played if someone plays a fireball or wither against you. And you can basically, if you're successful, bounce the spell back onto them. Finally, the last action you can take is you can roll two four-sided dice. If you roll doubles, you get the treasure troll, even if someone else has him. If you own the treasure troll on your turn, at the end of your turn, you will draw the top card from the resource pile and put it in your hand. Now, when you kill somebody else, you'll take their card and put it in front of you. You've killed them. Hooray. Each turn, they're rolling the two ten-sided dice, trying to get an 18, 19, or 20. If they do, they're back in the game. Otherwise, if you kill everybody else, you win. Or if you manage to get all your levels up to three, you also win. There are some nice ideas in mages. I like the resource row, collecting resources and upgrading your levels and buying spells and using those spells and buying items. The basic idea of the game is nice. There's three actions, you do those actions. 
but there are some flaws in the game that are problematic. For one, 200 Finn cards, the money, which I'm still not sure why it's called Finn, um, but anyway, 200 Finn cards are worthless except to the one character. I mean, yeah, two of them once you buy an item, but they're just, they're worth less than the other cards. And in a game like this where you're drawing and drafting cards, as the 200 Finns show up in the center row, nobody is ever going to draw them and that can cause some clogging later on. Um, the item cards are interesting and unique, and I like them, but I wish they were secret because if you get a card, for example, that blocks someone's spell, you place that face up in front of you, well, you put everyone kind of in this weird position of, I don't want to play a spell against you because you're going to block it, but if I don't play it against you ever, that card's going to sit there in front of you forever. I think it would have been much better had the card been in someone's hand and you didn't know if they could block it or not. Um, the item cards are okay and interesting. The the troll, I like the troll. The idea of rolling doubles on fours, which is, a, I think you have a one out of four chance of that happening. Um, so people do that when they don't know what else to do with their action. And so once someone gets them, then people will think about doing it more often because the person who gets them gets an extra resource every turn, which can be a big deal. The, the orbs are different colors, which match the different spells, and that works okay. Um, but it does make sense to buy the fireball spells. It's much easier to take someone out of the game. You hit them twice as opposed to getting all your levels to three, which is a much more difficult thing. Sure, there's healing and counter spells, but if in the multiplayer game, a couple people can uh, gang up and really take someone out of the game. And rolling 18, 19, or 20 to see if you come back in? That's just dumb. I mean, it really is. Why would I just want to keep rolling every turn and maybe come back in? There's a lot of luck in this game. doesn't matter if I'm level 3 and I roll a 10 side of die and I roll a 1. You, the 4 side of die, you roll a 3. That's intriguing, but at the same time, it doesn't matter in the long run. And drawing the different cards and, and upgrading your stuff, there's just a lot of luck in the, what you have and the cards you get. I like the idea of the game. It's interesting. It's... it's um, the collecting resources to get spells and fighting each other, but it feels like more development should have been done. It feels like they could have gone farther with this. Um, and as it is, it's kind of like a nice type game, but the end game isn't very interesting. Elimination is never that great of a thing in a game like this, especially in four players, where one player could be eliminated pretty quickly and then sit there simply rolling dice for a while. That's problematic. So I think the problems, oh, uh, and uh, one more problem I should mention, it's a pretty big problem. The rule book is just really bad. It's really tiny font, hard to read, and doesn't actually explain all the rules in the game. I had to go online to find out what Mazika was. was it, I assumed it was wild because they said you could only take one per turn, but that's problematic uh, too. And so the whole thing just has too many problems. I think a strong developing hand would have made this project better as it is. I don't hate the game. I, it was fine. I had an interesting time playing it, but I don't think I can recommend it either. Dice Tower Judgment, pleasant, but needed more development. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Unki de Usha. Boo? Boo?